Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Stoddard, and I'm a senior supervisor in Global Advanced Operations, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about MySQL databases. So a MySQL database, it's a structured collection of data that's stored on a server, and it's organized in a way to make it easy to find the information you're looking for. So as a web developer, a really common one that we see is WordPress or any of the database-driven applications. Uh, Joomla is another one, WooCommerce, etc. It's also used for like e-commerce solutions and then even for like within businesses with their, their offices, like their applications that they run. So MySQL is used to be able to store your data in a way that makes it easily retrievable. And it does this by putting it in tables. Uh, best way to think of a table is like a spreadsheet. You can make it specific to the information you need contained on that spreadsheet, but then you can have another spreadsheet that links back to that spreadsheet. So if you have a user, the first table is their contact information. And then the second one could be their order history or the post on your website. And the neat thing about all of this is that you can use the SQL portion of MySQL to pull that data together and present it in a way that gives you the information you're specifically looking for. Without the tables, there's no organization at all, and it makes it almost impossible to find anything. That's the neat thing about MySQL, because the SQL part stands for Structured Query Language. So that lets you poke into the data and say, I want to see these specific things in this specific context, show me the results. And then it comes out and gives you the information. The best way to think about this is like a phone book. When you open it up, the white pages are sorted alphabetically. But what if you need to know everybody that lives on a certain street instead of their name or the first three digits of their phone number are all the same by using SQL, or the structured query language, you're able to retrieve this data and present it with just the information you're looking for. But the key to MySQL, along with the structured query language, is the keys. So a key is a unique identifier for every record inside of a database that allows all of the information in each of the tables to be indexed to provide the data you're looking for specifically with the query you've created. So you have your query that uses your key that talks to your tables, that comes back with your information. Sounds simple, right? Well, an easy way to think about it is, and I'm showing my age a little bit here, the Dewey Decimal System. If you've gone to your library and you've had to look, you always see those numbers that identify what a topic is for a book. So that gets you your starting point. So if you're looking for the history of Rome, you know that this number on the shelf in the library is where the history of Rome is stored at. And then once you get there, it can be stored by author, it could be stored by type of book, fiction or nonfiction, et cetera. And it helps to narrow down what your search is. Another quick analogy to think about with a database, if you're trying to describe it to a customer, is to think of a really big filing cabinet that has lots of data in it. Normally we sort it, like we said with the phone book, it can be sorted alphabetically, but it could be sorted by customer number, it could be sorted by city, it could be sorted by product. The nice thing with this filing cabinet is it's a magic filing cabinet if you're using SQL, because you can sort the data however you need to. The biggest thing to think of with MySQL is how you want your data to be stored. Because one of the elements of SQL that's really powerful is the elimination of having duplicate data. So if you structure your database correctly, it makes things easy for you in the long run because you can build all of the information you need using your structured queries. So one thing to remember with your database is if you're using a product that doesn't have automated backups like our managed WordPress, you want to make sure you're backing your database up regularly. Not just your files, but your database because the files are the body, but the database is the brain. And if you don't have both of those pieces, they're not gonna work. So the best advice I would give to a web developer is to look at the product or tool that you're using. WordPress is a great example of this. WordPress comes to fall with 12 different tables that stores all the information you need for your website to run properly. Now, if you install extra plugins or theme, you may get extra tables in there, but the nice thing is it's all presented to you in a uniform way in your dashboard, and all you have to focus on is the development of your website. Now, if you're developing from scratch, that's a lot deeper topic that we're not going to get into today. Well, thanks so much for joining today to hear a little bit about the basics of MySQL databases.